All right, the, to say we've hit a rough patch for crypto investors would be an understatement. However, it's got the doubters and naysayers circling like sharks, as each day seems to bring more questions and even more bad news. Now, many are saying, hey, listen, this is just part of the curve. It's only natural when you have something like this, something revolutionary like this. But there are still some issues, including legal issues, that feel like a whirlwind. Not really, not sure just yet. Joining me now, crypto lawyer, law founder, rather, John Denton in uh, uh, I want to start with the SEC chair yesterday or this week, Gary Gensler. He made some comments, uh, and some aren't sure where he's putting Bitcoin, for instance. Uh, did he say Bitcoin was a commodity? Is it a security? And where does that leave the rest of these cryptos? Well, Charles, thank you for having me. Yeah. Gary Gensler came out and finally, after a year, finally said that Bitcoin is a commodity, but it took him a year to do it. And he didn't comment on any of the other cryptocurrencies. And there's a specific reason for that. He prefers there to be vagueness and regulatory uncertainty, because when there's regulatory uncertainty, it allows him prosecutorial options, right? Because that gray you, area, that gray area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> I'm on the security side. Believe me, when I first got into business, I found out about the gray area the hard way. Uh, because they're, you know, particularly small, young and, you know, and, and coming into the business, you start a business and, and the Wall Street side, there's no, like you said, there's no clear lanes, but they do this deliberately. You think he's, they, they deliberately leave these gray areas? Oh, absolutely. There? Because if you provide guidelines, what do entrepreneurs and companies do, Charles? They meet those guidelines. When you keep it uncertain, it gives you options for him to continue to engage in regulation by an uh, in, enforcement right? right that's how he's doing it i've went on record to say that to predict that he's going to sue an exchange or two by the end of this year and claim that they're selling unregistered securities other than bitcoin but he won't tell you which ones are securities right right you know that's the problem right right and it's hard to be ignorant of a law that if the law doesn't exist Exactly. <laughs> it's like, Absolutely. It's one thing to say, okay, I didn't know and it was on the books, but you're, you know, I, it's, it's really despicable. It's disgusting really? is, is what it is. He keeps going on record to saying these exchanges are selling securities. And then you ask, well, which ones? And he won't say, because now we know from his comment that you just asked me about, he's going to go with they're all securities except for Bitcoin, which makes this Ripple XRP case extremely important. I want to get to that in a Absolutely. minute, but let me just ask about all of the you know seemingly endless bad news. Yep. Some are saying, hey, you know what? This is a wild, wild west kind of thing. The opportunities are crazy, but you know they're there. And this is almost to be expected in a way it could be a good thing if we get something out of it maybe guardrails maybe some regulations what do you think well i think that uh the house of cards are kind of crashing in because you have some of these companies they have a business model of crypto lending with using highly leveraged strategies and they offer these 20 percent or higher uh, leveraged uh, applications and they can't meet them and when you get into an illiquid environment like we have today with raising interest rates it, liquidity dries up and the house comes crashing down and i think that eventually right. will clean the house so where is the Ripple case right now? Well, the Ripple XRP case, and I'm glad you asked because it's something I'm passionate about right. today, and I want to make sure I get the number right. Today, Charles, we hit 68,250 people from 61 different countries around the world that have joined to fight wow. the SEC in their overreach and government intrusion. And I want to tell you something. There's a couple thousand of them that don't even own XRP. They just feel like you do. It's disgusting of what's happening. Right. I mean, you know, and by the way, I did see last time, uh, the, the last time there was a, the, anything from the courts uh, that the CEO of Ripple said had gone, quote, exceedingly well. The notion that so many people want to see this succeed, again, whether you're an investor or not, I think speaks to the idea of freedom, of innovation, of self-determination. And there are a lot of powerful forces out there that don't want to see that happen. Absolutely. And what I think what's happening is that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, it's one of the few times in history where the individual kind of front run the, the industry, if you right. will, in the hedge funds. And personally, I think that Gensler's attack on crypto is to allow the hedge funds and the Wall Streeters to come in, crash the market. They come in and then By the way, they do the that with the stock thing. market all the time, all the time. By the way, did you see a guy from Citadel, left Citadel to get in the crypto business? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That's the regulators. About. The regulators leave and go to crypto, too. All right, John, you're doing a great job, really. So many it. people look up to you, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, Charles. Thank you very much. All right, folks, up next.